Hello and welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do kind of like a get ready with me. I don't do my makeup a lot. Uh, especially now with the quarantine and we're not going anywhere. So, But I wanted to do the makeup and books tag. Which I originally wasn't going to do because I really don't do my makeup very much. But I need to do something to get videos up right now. And... I don't think you guys are at a very good angle, so I'm going to readjust you. Okay. I don't know. I'm having trouble finding. You can't even see the top of my head. The problem is, is I just record on my phone and I record like selfie mode so that I can see you. <laughs> so I can see myself, I guess. And I can see uh, if I'm focused or whatever. So my goal this year is to get a good recording, a good camera for YouTube things. I'm a very, very, very small YouTuber. I don't even have like 30 subscribers right now. So I don't need anything like crazy, crazy busy, busy, anything crazy expensive or anything like that. So I'm gonna dump my makeup out here. Normally I would do my makeup out there in the living room or whatever, but my husband is home with the kids and I'm going to do it in the bedroom where it's a little bit quieter and yeah. So I got this, these pajamas in Arizona at Walmart. It says, but first, our coffee makes everything possible. The cute little pants. It says like, but first coffee, coffee makes everything possible. It's always coffee time. With the different cups so i got my coffee i got my makeup got my book questions so we'll see i've been trying to think of answers for these because i printed them off last night but i don't know we'll see so i already got my hair wet as you can tell and having curly hair is always a fun thing it's like how is it gonna fall today how is it gonna look today you never know it just kind of does its own thing i bought leave-in conditioner because my daughter has like my husband has very straight hair and i have very curly hair and my daughter has something in between it's a little bit thicker so it always gets this big huge rat's nest right in the back and people were talking about like leave-in conditioner and stuff and i have very dry hair hair well yes but i have a very dry skin so my scalp is very dry so I got that mane and tails washout or leave-in conditioner. So I've been trying that. So that's basically what's in my hair right now, which will keep it from big frizzy puffball. When I was in Arizona, I went to a Morphe store and I got this bronzer. So bronzer and contour, but I don't do my makeup enough to even know how to use this. So I've got to watch some videos on how to do that. So this is going to be very basic. I never even used primer. I just bought primer this year, actually. So this is a foundation primer revitalizer. So it's if you have dry skin from Morphe. I'll do the thing, but it's not going to focus anyways. But anyways, Morphe. I just bought this in February. So I never used primer before. And I don't even really use complexion corrector cream, like foundation, because I have my one doctor diagnosed it as perioral dermatitis so i don't know i've been suffering with it for at least eight years i don't know i can't remember if i had it before i had kids or not but it gets like severely this will get really red around here it cracks it burns it's itchy it's very painful my one doctor said it was a vitamin b12 deficiency but i don't think so <laughs> anyways i've been given some cream for it for the perioral dermatitis I've been given some cream for it and that helps a little bit but I find if I put first of all my skin is very sensitive and I like the Mary Kay products and I find that they're okay on my skin but because it's already broken out and really bad putting anything on it just irritates it and also it gets really flaky so then I just have all this flaky skin everywhere that's just covered in a foundation and it just I feel like it more highlights the problem than concealing it. So I don't usually use concealer, but primer. Pick a book that left a lasting impression on you. For me, I've talked about this a little bit, but I think I'd have to go with Summer Sisters just because my aunt recommended that to me when I was like 12. 
by Judy Bloom. She recommended this to me when I when I was 12, and I've read it a couple of times since then, but it's been a few but it's been a few years. So, I'm planning on starting it this June again at the beginning of summer for summer sisters like i'm 32 and i read it when i was around 12 years old and i still think about it and it's still a book that it was one of those books that i actually enjoyed when i was reading it and i wasn't a big reader back then and i really liked it and it's a thick book and it follows the these two girls from the time they're around that age 10 12 something like that and all the way until they're like 30 it might go to their 40th birthday and just their relationship and how they summer sisters so they only ever the one family traveled there like in the summers and they were friends just during the summer months right and they didn't see each other during the rest of the year and then like as they grow up and go into college and stuff and have that time like they i think they go to college together like i said it's been a while since i read it but i feel like it had a lasting impression because i still think about it i still want to read it it was a, a friendship book that made me want to have friends like that it was just like a coming of age story and stuff and I just really liked and connected with the characters. The one character was I think more the way I am and then the other character was more I guess like outgoing and eccentric and stuff but I really I just really connected with that book and even now I think I'll still connect with it because it does go beyond just their teenage years and I'm excited to read it again this year so I'll have more to say about it then. So I already did the concealer stuff from under my eyes because I'm not very good at makeup. I've been watching YouTube beauty people and someone said like if for better coverage to put it on and let it sit for a few minutes before like blending it in. Lasting impression, Summer Sisters. Found foundation, which I'm not going to do today, but I've been using the Mary Kay. I need a new one. The CC cream, uh, light to medium. I don't even know how old this is. It's probably expired. I think it expired like three years ago. Uh, but yeah, the complexion corrector is usually what I use for foundation, I guess. Favorite foundation. Favorite first book in a series. Now, I don't read a lot of series. So I don't even... I don't know. I read Hunger Games before the movies came out. And I really liked that. And I want to reread it because, I mean, I read them when the movies were coming out. So, really, it's been a long time. And now that prequel is coming out, that Songs and Ballards one, which I pre-ordered off of Chapters. I feel like I need a lot more concealer today. So I want to read it. I was asking my husband, do you read it? If you've read a series, that's too much. This is like another kind of concealer from Morphe. It doesn't say anything on it about like what it is. But if you've read a series, like one, two, three, the trilogy, and then they release a prequel to those, and you've been wanting to reread the series anyways, or even say a, like a movie, trilogy and then they release a prequel what do you do do you reread them in the order that they were written and published like star wars they released four five and six first and then years later came out with one two three and this is not an argument about whether one two and three exist or not but say you're like well i really liked four five and six and i haven't read it in a, or watched it in a really long time so do i go and watch four, five, and six, and then one, two, and three when they come out? Or do I wait for them to come out and watch one, two, three, four, five, six? So you're getting it in chronological order, or do I watch it in the order that it was released? And my husband said with something like The Hunger Games, because I've already read one, two, and three, to wait for the prequel to come out and read it that way. Read it with the prequel first and then one, two, and three. But if I'd never read it, then maybe read one, two, three, four, first the the first in the trilogy the way it was released kind of thing now i put on this other corrector so i might need to i'm trying to think of other series that i've read beyond the hunger games that sounds like a new book beyond the hunger games that i really enjoyed 
Well, I talked about my last video, the Circle series, which I'm going to be re reading or, well, listening to it before, blend, 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 before I get into the books after the Circle series, because those are not prequels, they're sequels. So the Circle series, I don't know if that was the best. It's been too long since I read that one. I don't know if that was the best in the beginning, the favorite first book in the series, or Hunger Games was a good one. See, I haven't read a lot of series, so that's a hard one. We're gonna go on to eyebrows, which are done. I wax them. I have a little like face facial razor that I got off Amazon that I use to kind of keep everything clear cleaned up, especially when I can't go out and get things waxed. I don't do my eyebrows at all. I don't even have eyebrow makeup. Pick a book you think everyone should read, and that is Jurassic Park. I'm going to keep saying that. I love Jurassic Park. It was such a good book, and I definitely want to reread Jurassic Park and The Lost World. Concealer. Pick some characters you wish didn't exist. Which, I was thinking about this when it comes to TV shows. There's a few characters. There's one character that definitely comes to mind. But without that character, so many plot points and th twists and stuff in the series wouldn't happen in the show, right? So even though he's a character that I love to hate, he is essential to the story. And I'm talking about Ward from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV show. So even when it comes to books, I can't think of any characters I don't like in books that I wish did not exist. I think a lot of times I read a book and then if I didn't like it, I'm just like, whatever, I didn't like it. And kind of move on. That is um, Eyelid Primer, also by Morphe, that I like. It's really silky. Characters you wish didn't exist. So I hate Ward from <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D. And no, he did not get a redemption arc. This is enough said about that. But that is not a book. This is not a good book tag for me. Powder, something else I don't use. Pick your favorite last book in a series. I don't even know. There is one series I've read, which I'll talk about for something else, but it's so long, so long. I can't even think of like, this is my favorite book or this is my least favorite book. I'd have to reread it, I feel like, which I'm not going to do, not anytime soon. Oh, another series I did read was The Raven Cycle, because it's talked about so much on booktube. I actually decided to listen to it and I really enjoyed it. I really liked the narration and it was fun, but I can't, I listened to it like one book after the other. So I can't even be like, this was my favorite book or this was my least favorite book. Cause I'm like, I listened to it all too much. It was like one long book, basically. <laughs> Another series I'm trying to listen to is Scythe, but it's just taking a very long time for my husband and I to get into it. My palettes are also Morphe. It's just taking a very long time because it's just hard to listen to a book together because we have children. Normally we're listening to it in the vehicle, but we haven't gone anywhere. We started listening to it on our five hour drive south to get to the airport to get to Arizona. Well, we actually flew to Vegas. We went very around about trying to decide what I want to do. We were listening to it, it's a five hour drive, it's like a ten hour book, but we only had the CD for it, so we couldn't even listen to it at like a sped up thing, a sped up rate. And my husband doesn't like to just listen, like if we're on a five hour drive, he wants to break it up with like a podcast or a book or music. He doesn't want to just listen to straight five hours of a podcast or, a, or an audio book, which I can understand that for sure. Uh, I like to break it up a little bit too. Usually like if I'm driving by myself, if I'm doing that drive by myself, I do music and then podcasts. And now I've gotten more into books. So uh, audiobooks. Scythe is taking us a long time. We listened to it a little bit on the drive there and then on the drive back. But since we got back a month ago, we haven't listened to it at all. Let me do some like highlighting here. I don't know what colors I want to do. Powder, pick your favorite last book in a series. I'm also going to be rereading the Sunwing series with the bats. So I'll have more information on that. I don't think the last book in that was my favorite though. The first the first book in a series, that was probably one of my favorite. 
Uh, I am enjoying Scythe. And it's been too long since I've read Hunger Games, even though Hunger Games is probably one of the best. Eyeshadow. Pick a book with your favorite colors on the cover. Okay, so my favorite colors. When I was a kid, my favorite color was actually red. And now it's more like pink and gold and sparkly. So there's this color, pink. This is me. Loving the Person You Are Today. This is me by Chrissy Metz, who is from This Is Us. So I really like this cover. I think I got this off Book Outlet. But I really just like this pink. This is like the kind of pink I really like. Um, well, obviously I'm wearing like a light pink, which I also like. But the, the bright or the dark or the hot pinks and hot colors is what I am more drawn to, I guess. But this is just a really pretty cover. I was gifted The Night Circus, which I haven't read yet, but it does have the red, and this is um, a paperback, but I just think this is a really nice cover as well, and I like the black and the white and with a little pop of color there, which I think is really nice. And then my friend also gifted me uh, Homegoing, which I think is really pretty with the, the reds and yellows and oranges and stuff, and very just colorful. So that's what I found on my shelves for now, was just a quick glance. And then... And try holding up my Morphe palette. This is the uh, 39S. Such a gem. So I just love these colors and I'm trying to experiment with them a little bit more. Some of them are kind of intense and then I put them on and I'm like I feel like a clown but I'm just learning how to do them right. So we'll see. I was thinking about I'm always like I'm just gonna go light and gold and nothing too crazy and then I look and I'm like I want all the colors. So I'm looking at this and I might go with this one, which is called, if I can get it right, Strike a Pose, I think that one is. So it's kind of like a dark plum, but sparkly. Concealer powder, eyeshadow, eyeliner. Pick a dark and mysterious book. So that's an interesting one. I don't think I read a lot of dark and mysterious books. So maybe I need a little bit more of that. Look at that. In my life. Dark and mysterious. Just dab it on there. Like, I want to learn how to do like a winged eyeliner, which is maybe something I can do during this quarantine and I don't need to leave the house. And I don't even need to do like full on makeup. I can just sit there and practice with eyeliner. But I just have like Annabelle, like a regular, like pencil crayon type eyeliner. Nothing crazy. And then these Morphe ones I got, I like, it just says color pencil, so you can use it like lip or eyes. So I got a purple, which is called Faith. I got Scarlet, which is red. And I thought I had another one. Maybe I just grabbed the two. I'm pretty sure I grabbed three. The lids don't stay on very well, apparently, but... And I also got a white one, which is also an Annabelle white one to go like in the corners of the eye because I heard that putting white in the corner can make it pop. Those are my makeup beauty tips that I got from YouTube. It looks so dark like right there. It's always good to have a clean brush that you don't put any makeup directly on that you just use to like blend it. A blending brush this one is these brushes i got just inexpensive off of amazon and they're supposed to be like unicorn because what 30 year old doesn't want unicorn makeup i was gonna say paint brushes but if you're an artist and you like to paint also paint brushes dark and mysterious Mysterious. I'm still trying to think of a dark, mysterious book. I read a lot of, like, what's gotten me into reading is, like, the detective crime ones. And now I'm getting into detective crime. So, like, James Patterson and Michael Connelly were my two favorite. I stopped reading James Patterson a long time ago just because I felt like it got really repetitive. And it was, like, the same story over and over. But there was one book he did which I think it's, there's a couple in the series with Alex Cross, and I think it's London Bridges, which was really good, and had a big, <clears throat> excuse me, 
had a big twist in it that I did not see coming. And I just, that book was really good and I really enjoyed that at the time. Uh, I wouldn't say it was dark and mysterious, but now I'm getting more into Karen Slaughter books, which are definitely more dark. There is that mystery there. And the one I'm doing is like the Karen Slaughter's The Grant series. The Grant County series is like a more mystery, definitely, and dark. So Karen Slaughter, if you want something a little bit darker, I wouldn't necessarily call it, I'd call it more like suspense thriller more than mystery though. But apparently I don't read a lot of mystery. Yeah, I'm just going like shiny today, apparently. Uh, so if you want dark, Karen Slaughter is pretty gruesome. Mascara. Pick a long book. So this is the one where I've read the series. I have Elf, but it hasn't been working. It's, I think it's kind of running out. So I got Wet n Wild Mega Volume Mascara. I really like Mary Kay. Oh, we're supposed to do eyeliner first. I really like Mary Kay. It's just I don't have the money for it right now. So I haven't bought it. I don't know if you can see me when I like lean in here so pick a long book outlander that's one where a lot of people told me to read it but the one person i've talked to the most about it she said her friend gave her a copy of the book decades ago because it's been going for so long and they said like the first hundred pages or so are kind of slow but just push through it it gets amazing and you know it's a long book if the first hundred pages are slow but then the rest of the book is good like, most books, if it's 300 pages and a third of it is boring, like, why would you keep going with it? Yeah, Outlander. And Outlander, again, is one. It took me a couple of years to read through the series thus far, because it's so long and taking her so long to get the last book out here. I don't know if it's the last book or just the latest book, but either way. It's hard for me to remember what happened exactly in each book. So, I remember what happened, like, in the first book, basically, but I wouldn't necessarily say that was the best in the series. And there is a character in there that you hate. Black Jack Randall? Is that what they call him? But again, you need him. You can't, like, talking about a character you wish didn't exist, you need these bad characters. And that question about what character you don't want to exist isn't doesn't necessarily mean, like, the villain, the bad guy. It's just, it could be the the main character. It could be the protagonist. You just really didn't like that person. But even with that, I can't think of any characters that I found were pointless or useless or... I didn't, I really didn't like them or they were pointless. They just didn't need to be there. I can't think of any characters like that. But a long book, even just the first book in Outlander is, I'm pretty sure, like somewhere around 600 pages. And then they just get longer after that. It's hard for me to judge the size of the books because I read them all through Overdrive on my Kobo, which was great because then you don't have to sit there and hold this like big book. Like I brought one of the books, the third or fourth one, to Japan with me, but just through my Kobo and I wasn't carrying like this huge book in Japan. Okay. okay is it just me i always get mascara like if i could do mascara first i would because i always get it like up in my eyeshadow and stuff but leave it on it will dry and then you can just like scrape it off i didn't leave it on very long but dark mysterious long book Long series, Outlander, Blush, pick a book with a cringeworthy romance. Now, this is why I didn't want to do this book tag, because I'm like, I'm going to have nothing to contribute to any of these. This is just like Elf or something cheap from the drugstore. I'm going to have nothing good to, to contribute. I can't think, I have got nothing to contribute for a cringeworthy romance. I can't think of... I can't think of anything, of course. 
um, highlight. Pick a book that brightens your day. I like chick flicks and girly movies and stuff. I'm all here for that, but I don't read a lot of romance books. What was the one I just read last year? It was like, kind of like a fangirl. This boy, as a teenager, played in a, like a sitcom kind of thing. Like Dawson's Creek kind of idea. And then he went to college to become a lawyer. And she's also a lawyer, like family, I think not family estates, but I can't think of the word for it. Hi. I was like, where is she? What's it called when, like, you have a lot of money? Like a trust, maybe? Like family trusts or something like that? And you're stepping on my makeup. Oh. Say hi, Maribel. Say hi. She's lying on my Morphe palette. Say hi. It was like a fangirl romance, basically, and it was not the best. Just cut me out of your video. You can just say random stuff like, like chickens. <laughs> the monkey has eaten the peanut butter sandwich and my mushrooms have gotten rotten. Uh, pick a book that brightens your day. What's a book that brightens your day? He's reading Scott Pilgrim. Maybe that brightened his day. Be glad it's not smell o vision here with that stinky dog breath. They're about all, all, all up in my makeup. Scott Pilgrim, that's what brightens your day. What brightens my day? Dr. Doolittle was funny and I actually laughed out loud with that one. Baths, napping. No, a book. <laughs> Jurassic Park. I already picked Jurassic Park for a book that everyone should read. Bone. Bone was a good one. That was the a good one. graphic novel Bone is pretty cute. And the first one in that series, the first one, is very cute. Your favorite book, Kiss. Lipstick. Which I don't really wear lipstick. Because my lips are too dry. The Spider-Man scene from uh... the... Spider-Man scene? Yeah, see? This should just be the books. Or not books. This should be the movies and makeup tag. Because I would be able to answer more of those questions with movies. The Sa Sam... Raimi. Raimi? Sam Raimi? Spider-Man kiss, the one where he's like hanging upside down and Mary Jane kisses him. I don't think I've answered most of these questions. A book that brightens my day. Well, Bone, I guess. A uh, graphic novel. I'll talk about that in another one, probably. Uh, lipstick, your favorite book, Kiss. I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of any books that I've read that has like this epic kiss in it. Maribel. Everybody doesn't need no makeup. Look at that eyeliner. Look at that perfect eyeliner. And that blush. Not blush, but... Aw. She's just been a big suck lately. She's 11 and a half years old. She'll be 12 in August, so... She's just our big, giant baby. There we go. Look at those jowls. My husband had the garbage out and thrown out some chili and it had beans in it and then she was in the car sitting there and i saw like her jowls were brown like this reddish brown color and i'm like did she get into the chili and he's like i thought i saw the garbage bag was down a little bit and maribel was nowhere to be seen oh oh i got a good spot oh, anyways i think i'm gonna end this here i don't have a good kiss scene the notebook I'm talking about movies. The Notebook had a good kiss scene in it, of course. And I did read that book, so it counts. Uh, Nicholas Sparks. Nicholas Sparks always has the good romance, right? Anyways, I'm going to end that here. And I thanks for watching me. Get ready. And my dog. Say bye, Maribel. Say bye. Say bye. Oh, she just wants belly rubs. Look at those paws. Look at those paws. I love her paws. She doesn't like me touching her paws because of arthritis. But... <laughs> Anyway, oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you for getting ready with me and watching me do my makeup and hope that my hair, it's so flat and I don't do anything with it, but I think it turned out fairly nice. 
So, yeah, thanks for getting ready with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Kiss.